Drosophila suzuki is a serious invasive fruit pest. On this strawberry, you see a female. She uses a damaged spot to drink some fruit sap. Only the males have a black spot on the tip of each wing. This characteristic spot plays a role in the courtship display that the males perform before mating and give the fly its English name, Spotted Wing Drosophila. Mating of Drosophila suzuki can last up to 30 minutes. This Drosophila from Asia causes damage because of its serrated ovipositor. It allows the fly to oviposit into undamaged ripening fruit. In contrast, only overripe or damaged fruits can be used for oviposition by native species. Here, you see the oviposition and how an egg is pushed through the ovipositor. The eggs have respiratory filaments that protrude through the fruit skin. Here you see the egg in more detail. It takes one or two days after oviposition until the first instar larvae hatch from the eggs. Only a few hours later, these larvae move actively within the food substrate. Soon, they will molt into the next larval stage. The first two larval stages of native Drosophila species, such as Drosophila subobscura, are hosts to a number of native larval parasitoids. One of them is Leptopolina heterotoma. We have found this species all over Switzerland. Because this species overwinters as an adult, it can be collected rather early in the growing season. Here, a female is cleaning itself. She parasitizes a Drosophila suzuki larva within its food substrate. As you can see, they do oviposit also into Drosophila suzuki. Unfortunately, the egg usually becomes encapsulated by the fly larva and the wasp cannot develop. However, encapsulation is costly for the flies, so that some of the fly larvae die after parasitization. The same is true for Leptopolina bulardi, a species that we have found in central and southern Switzerland. It overwinters as immatures and therefore appears later than Leptopolina heterotoma. Here, a female is fighting to parasitize a Drosophila larva. Now she is stung into the larva that continues to move heavily. Leptopolina does not paralyze its hosts they continue their development until the pupal stage, from which the parasitoid emerges. Their ovipositor is amazingly flexible. Parasitized or not, the fly larva molts into the next larval stage. After the molt, the shed mouthparts of the previous larval stages remain. The larvae keep on feeding. At that point, the fruit becomes rather pulpy. Here you see the prostigma with a papillae. In parasitized larvae, a melanized spot on the body marks the oviposition site from Leptopolina. Finally, a larva is ready for pupation. It searches for a drier spot. At that time, some larvae leave the fruit, while others stay on its surface, like this individual here. It enters the strawberry pulp. And then it reappears. Now the spiracal papillae become everted. They form the polyp-like structures that are characteristic for the pupae of Drosophila suzuki. 
The cuticle of the larva then hardens into a puparium. The actual pupa is formed inside the puparium. The parasitoid Vristovia fidenus attacks pupae of Drosophila when they are rather freshly formed. In fact, little is known about this species yet. A female is drilling with its ovipositor into the puparium, although she is not laying an egg. She is piercing the pupae and builds some form of a straw made of secretions from her ovipositor. She will use this straw for host feeding. The female drinks from the host hemolymph to mature her eggs. Now she drills into the same spot again, and probably this time she tries to lay an egg. Vristovia readily accepts Drosophila suzuki for parasitization. It is able to reproduce well on this host. The same is true for all the other pupal parasitoids that are introduced in this film. They produce numerous and healthy offspring on Drosophila suzuki. Mainly in the southern parts of Switzerland, we have found Trichopria drosophilae. In the northern part of Switzerland, a second species is more common that looks very similar, Trichopria modesta. This female here is drumming with her antennae to investigate the quality of this Suzuki pupa. Now she starts to drill into the pupa. Trichopria is an endoparasitoid that lays its eggs into the actual pupa of its host and not between pupa and puparium like the other pupal parasitoids introduced in this film. Another female is drilling into an older pupa. The wasp pupa forms inside the fly puparium. You can also see the feces of the pupa that are released shortly before emergence and which are called meconium. Finally, an adult is emerging. We collected Trichopria only from late July onwards and found them almost exclusively in natural and semi-natural habitats. This observation should be taken into account when thinking about using this species for biological control. The male antennae are beautiful. A rather generalist parasitoid of fly pupae is Spalangia erythromera that we found all over Switzerland, but only in traps on the ground. Here it is drilling into a pupa within a rotten blueberry. The wasps are very active, and they crawl into all kinds of small crevices. Therefore, filming of these wasps was quite a challenge. However, its behavior suggests that this species might be very good in searching pupae on the ground. A wasp larva is feeding on the host pupa that we have dissected out of the puparium. During the development, the wasp larva grows while its host pupa shrinks. Development in this species is particularly slow. It takes about six weeks at 22 degrees centigrade from egg to adult. At the same temperature, other species such as Trichopria drosophili and Vristovia phydenas only need about three to four weeks. This is a pupa a few days before emergence. The most common and most generalist parasitoid species in this film is Pachycrepoideus findemiae. It even develops as a hyperparasitoid on other drosophila parasitoids. A female is drilling into a Suzuki pupa. Between the pupa and the puparium, you can see her ovipositor. An egg is leaving the ovipositor. The valves of the ovipositor are used precisely to deposit the egg at the right spot. She slowly withdraws her ovipositor while she is still drilling into the pupa. Then she taps onto the oviposition site with her abdomen. It seems as if she is marking the oviposition site. She drums for a while. 
and then she leaves. Again, you see the parasitoid egg and the wasp pupa. Unparasitized pupae continue their development. Here, a fly is ready to emerge. The fly is cleaning itself. It unfolds its wings until it is ready to fly off. And to start a new cycle.